Hi everyone, uh, just a quick video here on how to test your uh, engine temperature sensor. So, this is obviously the engine temperature sensor. Obviously the ECU uh, uses this to see what the, the running temperature of the engine is. Uh, normally it's located where the thermostat housing is, because when the, ther when the engine gets up to running temperature, the thermostat opens, so that's the hot point. Or they can be located uh, at the exit of the radiator, when the coolant is as cool as it's going to be before it goes back into the hot engine. So. The information will go back to the ECU, the ECU will decide if it's within the operating range it's designed to be and then it will turn the fan on, the radiator fan normally, if it's uh, outside that uh, comfortable uh, operating range for that car. So we're going to test this uh, engine temperature sensor today because they do go down. common symptom will be that the radiator fan's on constantly because the engine ECU does not know what temperature the car's running at. Sometimes it can be poor starting or rough idle as well depending on the uh, the vehicle. So. Uh, all we're going to do is a resistance test on this temperature sensor and we're going to see uh, what we get. So first of all, just to mention, it's a negative temperature coefficient sensor. What that means to me and you is as the uh, temperature increases, the resistance inside here will reduce. So I'm going to test it at room temperature and then I'm going to test it in this water I've just boiled up to 90 degrees. What I should see is a reduction in the uh, resistance as it goes uh, into the hot water. And I'll take it out again and I should see that start to, to climb back up the resistance if it's operating properly. So I've got my multimeter set to 20k, which is 20 kilo ohms. So that's one kilo ohm is a thousand ohms. So effectively that's set on 20,000 ohms. And that's the first setting I'm going to need to test it uh, at room temperature, which is roughly 15 degrees C. So I've got a multimeter in COM and I've got it in the uh, ohm setting there as well for the red lead. So it doesn't matter which way around you do it. There is just two connectors on a temperature sensor. So because it's quite tight in there, I've taken the covers off the crocodile clips. So one on there, obviously one showing open circuit on the multimeter at the moment, and the other one there. So both are clipped on each terminal. And what I've got at the moment, if I just get my pen, is 2.2 ohms at 20K, which means that's uh, 2,220, uh, 2,210 in this case, uh, on the scale there, because I'm set on the thousands. So as I put it into the boiled water here, that's just around about 90 degrees. You should see that drop down. I will need to drop it down to the 2000 scale, uh, the 2K, uh, 2 kilo ohm scale, um, when I get to that point. So I've put it in the boiling water there. As you can see, it's dropping quite quickly. Um, so yeah, we're at 1200 and it continues to drop. So I'm gonna drop it down to the 2K scale. So two kilo ohms. So now in the hundreds, 700, and I'm dropping still. So it's in this boiling. This is a thermostat kettle, so you can test thermostats or engine temperature sensors in them. They're quite handy to have. So I'm down to 500. It's starting to uh, slow down the rate of dropping. Because it's dropping gradually, I'm looking for any dead spots as if it jumps down uh, a large number, but this temperature sensor is dropping quite steadily, which tells me that there's no dead spots within the sensor. So I think the sensor's okay. I'm just gonna see where it bottoms out at this temperature that the, the kettle's at, which is uh, about 90 degrees. So most thermostats open between 85 and 90 degrees, uh, depending on the manufacturer and the type of engine. So it's just about uh, stabilizing. Just about there. So we're, obviously this is still at two K, so this is thousand. So it's showing 0.397 in that instance. It's still hundreds, uh, hundreds of ohms of resistance. So I think we're about there. There we go. I'll, I'll record it at this. So we're just about to stabilize. So it's at two K. So 0.381. Okay, so in that can uh, in this case, that's actually three hundred and eighty-one uh, ohms, and that one up there is actually two thousand two hundred um, ohms. You're roughly looking at a, a, a tenfold decrease, so two thousand two hundred. I'd be looking at something around the two hundred uh, two hundred twenty mark. It's not quite going that low, but that's not a problem really. It's it's still operating well within the expected band. And I'm just now watching it to uh, see if it increases in a steady way 
Um, so far, so good. It's just climbing steadily. And it eventually, when it gets back to being fully cooled down and back to room temperature, it should end up roughly around about that sort of figure. So I'm just going to allow it to do that. Again, looking for any dead spots, any any freezers, any big jumps up, uh, one or 200 at a time would suggest that there's a fault internally within the temperature sensor, but uh, again, it's climbing gradually. It's not too bad doing it, but I'm not sure if this is a really good spectator spot, but it is the best way of testing this sensor. I'm eventually hoping it will return back to that to uh, 2.2 so I will move the scale back up to the 20k this is effectively obviously 930 940 Still quite warm. I'm going to speed this up a little bit just by putting in some cold water. I'll still see it climbing. Even with the cold water, it's still steadily decreasing at a good rate. I'll just dry it on this towel so it doesn't get too cold because it's going to, the cold water is going to make it go beyond what it naturally would be sat in the car. It should stabilize. At 2.2. There we have it. That's how you test your engine temperature sensor. Uh, as I say, if your fan's on all the time, that's uh, probably a good indicator that your engine temperature sensor is not working properly. Hope that makes sense, and we'll see you on the next one.